this is a lecture on section uh, 1.2 of production materials, uh, or rather, yeah, uh, section 1.2 of the HSC course, which is production materials, uh, materials from biomass. Now, uh, what this one's all about is uh, it's the position of the border studies that the world is running out of oil. And it follows logically that any products currently produced from oil will need to be synthesized from some kind of a source in the future. Uh, so even if uh, we could meet all of our energy needs from renewables, when we run out of oil, uh, we're still going to need a source for uh, the other chemical production we do, uh, and particular plastics that we make out of oil at the moment. Uh, so that's the, the premise of this. Uh, and uh, the uh, the promising, the most promising renewable source for uh, for these uh, for the same kinds of products is uh, biomass. So biomass is um, a general term for the constituent products that make up biological life, whether that's animals, animal products, or plant products, or microbial products. Uh, now there are chemical processes that can convert biomass into useful chemical products and substitutes for the things that we currently get from petrochemicals. Now, because petrochemicals are currently used incredibly widely, uh, like things from, from fuel to building materials, clothing and electronics, uh, our economy could really function as it does now without these products. Uh, that's why we're looking at biomass. So, if you get any questions on why is it important, uh, that's why it is. Now, the first thing you'll need to know in this section is you need to know about one biopolymer. A biopolymer is a, a polymer, uh, I guess, uh, that's made from biological sources. So instead of polymerizing uh, some kind of petrochemical, like say uh, ethene, making that into polyethylene, uh, which, uh, which has already been dealt with in the course, it's like, well, what if we're all out of oil? We won't have any more ethene. How are we going to make uh, how are we going to make polymers that we need? All right. Well, the one um, you could uh, you could choose from a few, but the one I'm going to talk about, you only need to know about one today is biopole okay, that's uh it's a proprietary uh by proprietary I mean the uh, the design for it is owned by a company uh, that's invented it it's a proprietary uh, biopolymer and uh, it's uh, got some very particular uh, some very particular things about it you'll need to know. Uh, you're asked to talk about a biopolymer in the HSC. One of them is that it's, uh, it's a copolymer. So what that means is that there are two monomers going to building up the polymer. So it's, it's repeated units of uh, three hydroxy butyrate. And three hydroxy valerate. Now I could draw them, but there's little point because uh, it's unlikely to be asked to uh, to draw the constituent components of the of the biopolymer. But you probably will need to know the names. So three hydroxy butyrate, three hydroxy valerate. Uh, now, the uh, the important thing about this design is that they can make these constituent products uh, in some kind of biological setting. So you don't need oil in order to make it. Uh, now, how do they actually do it? Well, 3-hydroxybutyrate and 3-hydroxyvalerate uh, could both be produced by bacteria. Uh, they're naturally produced by bacteria. One of the bacteria that they uh, naturally occur in 
He is called Alcali Genes Eutrophus. So Alcali Genes Eutrophus. Uh, so that bacteria is, is capable of producing it. Uh, and they're also trying to use, uh, they ask about the methods, they're also trying to use genetic engineering to get the genes out of this particular bacteria and to put it into um, other bacteria that are easier to grow on easier substrates. So they're still working on that. There's a few things to know about it. Um, one, it's relatively expensive, still more expensive uh, than uh, petrol-based polymers. They all will be because um, the raw materials for petrol-based polymers just kind of gush out of the ground uh, <laughs> in uh, oil wells. It's very cheap at the moment uh, to, to make things out of oil. So, yeah, biopolymers are not... Not really economical at the moment. Um, this one in particular is biocompatible as well as being biodegradable. Now, biocompatible means that the body doesn't have a reaction to it. Uh, it's not gonna. It's not gonna irritate the body. Uh, this thing. Uh, it doesn't irritate your immune system. And biodegradable, of course, means it breaks down in biological settings. Now, both of these mean that there's actually some really good medical uses for this biopolymer, because it's the sort of thing that you can you can use as a stent or in various kind of surgical uh, techniques. Sew somebody up, and then you know that the uh, the product isn't going to irritate them or cause problems, or it's very unlikely to. It's biocompatible. And uh, you don't need to go back in and get it out, so you don't need to cut them up again uh, because it's biodegradable. So you can know that over a certain amount of time, you know the amount of time it's going to break down. So you know once the uh, once the implant has done its job, if it's that kind of implant where it just needs to temporarily do something, uh, it will then biodegrade, and there's no need for extra surgery. Uh, this particular one, this uh, this biopol, it's got many of the, the qualities of most uh, polymers. Um, uh, so it's got things like it's got a high tensile strength. It's insoluble in water. It's got it's got most of the qualities of polyethylene really, uh, except the the other really good feature of this one uh, in non medical context as well is the biodegradability, uh, which is um, which is a big plus. But at the moment, it's very expensive to produce. Uh, it's much more expensive to have to feed bacteria uh, good, uh, good quality foods uh, in order to get them to produce these chemicals and then treat them to turn them into polymer. That's a lot harder than just getting oil out of the ground and, um, and creating an addition polymer. Now, let's talk a bit about... Um, how these things are polymerized. Uh, you won't need to know the exact details of it, uh, but with biopolymers and uh, with uh, another biopolymer we're going to look at, which is a lot more common, uh, which is to say cellulose, um, there's a particular kind of polymerization reaction. So uh, when we're looking at ethylene in a different video, uh, turning into polyethylene, might remember it was known as an addition polymer. And addition polymers, they capitalize on a double bond between two carbons. When that gets broken, turn into a single bond. These carbons now have extra, this extra kind of free bond that used to be joined together. And you can use that to kind of make your polymers repeat at that point. Uh, and that's how you create the chain, essentially. Okay, so that's what an addition polymer is, but uh, with our biopolymers, uh, that's not so simple. We don't have these carbon bonds. 
available, these double bonds to do that. And so uh, they have to use a different method, and that is called condensation. That's a condensation reaction. We're going to come up uh, against some, some other condensation reactions as well, really just one other uh, later on with esters, but this is condensation polymerization. So condensation polymerization makes condensation polymers. What does this mean? Well, what it means is that the reaction uh, is different to the addition polymerization. Uh, basically, in order to create the bonds that are necessary, uh, elements of the two units, so let's say this is uh, unit one and unit two, they're both monomers, and we want to get them to join together. Basically, we have to pull something off an existing bond of um, probably both of them, uh, get rid of that, and then these two can join together because we've created a free bond. With the condensation polymers that we're going to be looking at for the HSC, uh, the only important, uh, or the way that this is going to work, is that one of the units is going to have an H, another is going to have an OH. These are going to get taken away. Then we're going to get a link here, and we're going to get water as one of the products. So condensation, you can think, is you know, uh, obviously that's a physical process where water falls out of the sky, uh, water comes out of the vapor. And, and turns into a liquid. So condensation polymer, you think, well, water is ejected. Uh, that's what you need to know uh, in the HSC. Water is ejected in condensation polymer.